Let's take a look at all the recipes and let's add a JI compatibility to our mod. Alright, we found some back intelligence more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a JI compatibility to our mod. This is not going to be a dependency, this is just going to be a compatibility. That means while well, when your mod is installed and you also install JI, you're going to get some extra compatibility. It's not going to be required and that's a very important distinction because this is a compatibility, not a dependency. Now to add this is actually fairly straightforward. We wanted to navigate to the GitHub repository over here for just enough items, JEI, and I already have the getting started right here. This is the wiki entry, and you can see, basically, we first of all need to add the Maven over here to the repository. This is sort of a URL that the Java, and in this case, Gradle over here can use to sort of retrieve the mod by itself, right? So we don't have to do anything. So we just have to do it once over here. So basically just adding the Maven right here. In here, that's Jared's Maven. So that's quite important. And then we can go back. And then down here, dependencies for Forge Gradle. These three dependencies is what we want. So we can copy this over as well. And that's going to be under the dependencies right here. The MC version, we just want to change to Minecraft underscore version. There you go. And then what you can do is you can just select this Control C and Control V to paste it in so that it always says the Minecraft version right here. And then when it comes to the JI version, well, we have to check which one it is. And to check this, what you want to do is you want to open the Maven repository right here. And we want to go to a Mez. There you go. JI. We want to go all the way down to 120.1. Very important that we're using 120.1 Forge. And we can see the current version is 15.2.0.27. And to use this, what we're going to do in the Gradle properties over here, we're just going to add this as a new property. So this is going to be a dependency properties, and this is going to be called ji underscore version, which will be equal to exactly what we have found, right? 15.2.0.27. If you find another one, right, one that's more advanced, of course, you can use that as well. And then here you go, you can see that this now also recognizes the ji underscore version parameter or variable over here from the Gradle properties file. You can then hit the little load Gradle changes right here. You can also open the Gradle tab and hit the reload all Gradle projects button if that does not appear. You can see it once again starts building. This once again take can take, you know, anywhere from a couple of seconds to a minute or two minutes or so, depending on all sorts of different factors. Just let this run through, be patient, and then once we get a build successful, we can continue from there. And here we are, built successful in 27 seconds, and we can now proceed. To proceed in our tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called Compat. This is, of course, short for compatibility. In there, we need two classes. The first one is going to be the JI Tutorial Mod Plugin. There you go. And the second one is going to be the Gem Polishing, gem polishing Category. Let's say there you go. That's it. And we're going to start with the JI Plugin over here. That is going to have an annotation over here at JEI plugin. And you can see Mez JI API. We're going to hit the tab key to autocomplete. And we're going to implement the iMod plugin interface, hovering over this and implementing the get plugin UID method. And that is actually everything that we need to add. And here, we're just going to make a new resource location, tutorial mod on mod ID. And then this is going to be the JI underscore plugin. That is usually the name that you want to give this. Most important here is though that you have the mod ID added, of course. And for this, we're going to overwrite three methods. That is the register categories method. Yeah, this one, register recipes method. And lastly, the register GUI handlers method. Now, we can't do anything with this just yet because, well, our category is not yet done and we actually have to do the gem polishing category here first before we can do anything else. Now, luckily, this is not a complicated class at all. Now, for a category, basically, the idea is that each one of your recipe types is going to have a separate category associated with it. And that you can see by the fact that we're implementing the I recipe category of type gem polishing recipe over here. We're going to hover over this and implement all of these methods. That's going to be fine. And that is actually, I believe, the most of the stuff that we need. However, now we need a couple of different fields over here. The first one is going to be a public static final resource location. I'm going to call this the UID. This is equal to a new resource location. Tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then the name here is gem polishing. We will then have another resource location. That is going to be the texture. The texture here is going to be 
of course, the resource location of tutorial mod mod ID. And then where is this going to be? Well, of course, under textures, GUI, gem underscore polishing underscore station underscore GUI dot PNG. So this is once again just points to the texture right here that is basically responsible for showing up the GUI or the GUI. And that's going to be everything we need here. And then we need a recipe type. Now, you might ask yourself, well, a second, we already have a recipe type. Yes. However, this is a recipe type from MezJI API recipe. Very important that we choose the right class. This is of gem polishing recipe. I'm going to call this the gem polishing underscore type equal to a new recipe type over here, passing in the UID and then passing in gem polishing recipe dot class. We're also going to require a private final I drawable which we're going to call background and another private final I drawable. I'm going to call that the icon. Now, because those are final, we have to add them to a constructor. Luckily, we can just hover over this at constructor parameters, making sure we choose both of them, hit OK, and then a constructor is created for us. However, that's not quite right because what the constructor actually takes in is a I GUI helper. We're going to call this the helper. And then the background is going to be equal to a helper dot create drawable. This is correct from the texture, basically the GUI texture, 00176 uh, and 85 here as the height. This is, of course, just going to draw basically a shortened version of this texture over here. Shouldn't be anything too crazy. And then when it comes to the icon, we're going to say helper dot create drawable ingredient. This is exactly right for vanilla types dot item stack. And then we're going to make a new item stack of our mod blocks dot gem polishing station dot get right here, as this is going to be the icon that is displayed in the little tab inside of JEI. And then we can go down here and proceed. Get recipe type is going to be, of course, the gem polishing type. The component, we can use component.translatable this time, because uh, I have been scolded a little bit. We can literally just use this one right here, as you can see. So this is going to be gem polishing station. So we can literally just put this in here and that should be fine. For the background, funnily enough, it's this dot background. For the icon, it is this dot icon. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is going to be the set recipe method, which is pretty much the most important one, as this is responsible for building the layout. Now, the layout is built very similarly to our menu that we've seen. So basically, we want to take this builder right here and we want to add slots to it. And to add the slot, we basically want to make sure, okay, this is an ingredient slot, right? So an input slot or an output slot or a catalyst or a render only. In this case, it is an input slot. And the place that it's at is going to be 80 and 11. And this is going to add an ingredient right here. And the ingredient we want to add is recipe.getingredients.get and then zero. Very important here, add ingredient and add ingredients, two different things. I don't know why the naming is kind of weird in this case, but it has to be add ingredient and to double check, you want to middle mouse button click on your get ingredient method right here. And if you get to the recipe interface, then you might have an issue because then in the gem polishing recipe, the get ingredient method is not existent. And we can double check over here and we can actually see that this is the case. We have to override this. This is extremely important that we now override the get ingredients method right here. And we want to return, of course, our input items. That's all we need to do. However, it is very important. After overriding the get ingredients method, you will also now find if I middle mouse button click on this, it will now open the gem polishing recipe. This is extremely important. If this is not done, then you will get actually an error or the recipe will just not show up. And the X and Y values over here, because that might be a thing that people ask for. Well, this is of course the exact X and Y values of the input slot right here and then of the output slot as well. So that is going to be the builder.add slot. And this is then going to be the recipe ingredient role of output at 80 and 59, where it's going to add an item stack this time, item stack from recipe.getResult item. And we're just going to pass in a null right here. And that is going to be it. And that is the category set up and the set recipe method, which is basically the centerpiece of this also set up and we can now register everything. So first of all, we need to register the actual category. So this is going to be registration dot add recipe category with a new gem polishing category, passing in a registration that get JI helpers that get GUI helper. Awesome. That is the category registered. Now we want to be like, hey, now for this particular category, these are the recipes that you should basically note. 
For this, we need a recipe manager. I'm going to call this the recipe manager. Equal to Minecraft.getInstance.Level.GetRecipeManager. Absolutely correct. And then here we want a list of gem polishing recipe. This is going to be our polishing recipes. Equal to the recipe manager. Get all recipes for the gem polishing recipe dot type dot instance. Basically, it's just going to give us every single gem polishing recipe that it can find. And then we're going to add registration dot add recipe gem polishing category dot gem polishing type and then passing in the polishing recipes. Basically just saying, hey, this particular type, right, the gem polishing type is equal or is basically tied to this list of gem polishing recipes. And that is going to be everything we need here. It is pretty cool. And that is the GUI handlers right here where we're going to add a recipe click area. We're going to add the gem polishing station screen dot class. And then this is at position 60, 30, 20, and 30. I hope that those are correct. And then last parameter, very important, gem polishing category, gem polishing type. Because this should add a clickable area over the arrow, right? You've seen this probably previously where you can basically click on the arrow and then it's going to show you all of the different recipes. I'm unsure if this is 100% correct with the X, Y, and width and height with the coordinates right here. But if it's not, it is as easy as just changing some of the numbers. So that should be really trivial in this case. However, that is actually everything we need to do. So that's pretty straightforward, all things considered. This is, of course, just one recipe. If you have multiple different machines and multiple different recipe types, you will need to do this for each of your recipes. However, once you have one of those classes, you know, adding a second or a third one really is not that hard. And also, of course, if you have multiple inputs, you, this deals with it, right? So if the other input is at like, I don't know, like 125, 77 or something like that, you would just get another input right here from the ingredients list. And that is it, right? So that is pretty much all that there is to it. And because that's everything we need to do, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, Fonzo's back in Minecraft, and let's take a look over here. Let's see. Okay, so the show recipes is a little bit to the left, but honestly, that is a very, very small price to pay. And if I actually click on this, you can see Gem Polishing Station. We can see the coal and the seven diamonds that we're going to get. And you can even see where the recipe or from wh what mod the recipe is. So this is from our mod over here, which is pretty freaking cool. And everything else works as well, right? I hover over this. I press U. You can see over here, Gem Polishing Station. I press R, right? How do I make a sapphire it is exactly like this and i mean that this is absolutely freaking awesome and you can even see that all of our other recipes right that i've added right here for you know smelting the sapphire to a sapphire the raw sapphire to a sapphire smelting the ores to it that all works and is all present absolutely freaking fantastic that is pretty much how easy it is to add a ji compatibility to your mod Basically, you 100% want to add this. Otherwise, you will run into issues if your mod ever, you know, gets added to a mod pack. If you have one or two machines, basically, I would say even at one machine, you should add it definitely. And what you might also want to add is a block entity renderer seen in this video right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.